here on the left and move to the right. Mr. Zeller, why don't you begin, please, sir? All right, thank you. All right, I'm uh, Sid Fuzzy Zeller. I'm a retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel. I uh, spent almost 28 years in the Marines and uh, one year in the Nevada Army National Guard. Married with two kids. Uh, I retired in 2010 um, after uh, serving in three uh, wars, Kosovo, Afghanistan, and Iraq. I'm running as a conservative Republican with a focus on long-term solutions, such as renewable energy, hydroponic vertical farming, and improving our military's readiness and in, in, uh, interoperability with the emergency crisis consequent management organizations, uh, primarily here in Nevada and uh, surrounding states. Uh, while on active duty, I, uh, I was uh, diagnosed with PTSD and, and a mild uh, TBI. I'm a disabled veteran with 84% uh, dis disability rating. I understand what our young, guts, uh, our young vets are going through. I, uh, I have six men I currently supervise. Uh, five of them are veterans, three are disabled vets, so I, I do have a good understanding. So I, I thank you for this opportunity, and uh, I really thank the, um, the panel members for being interested enough, committed enough, and uh, dedicated to spend your time uh, listening to us ramble on and pontificate. You know what I'm going to start? Said, mic's on? Good. Okay, go ahead, Ken. Thanks. Drum roll, please. What? My name is Kenneth Wagner. I'm retired from the United States Army. I was retired. I didn't do the full time because I was wounded in the Gulf War. My son is actually just came home on leave from Afghanistan. He was wounded in uh, June. I, I get it. I understand why our uh, soldiers are having such problems. He comes home. He just talked to me about the things that are happening. Uh, we don't treat our soldiers very well. We haven't been treating our our uh, citizens very well. It's pretty easy to fix the problems we have. Our president wants to cut 100,000 combat troops out of the military. He wants to get rid of two aircraft carrier groups, and my answer to that is why don't we get rid of foreign aid before we do that? There's so many ways we can fix this country. This country is a great country. We deserve uh, better than what we're getting from our elected officials. I actually live in the district where I'm one running. It's kind of rare in this present climate. Everybody just thinks they can run wherever. The House of Representatives was put there so that we could represent the people where we live. And I refuse all money from lobbyist packs and special interest groups because no one will buy me. I'm always going to do what's right for the country. Hi, my name is Karen Hill. I'm running. I'm a Republican because I believe it is the party of individual freedom and following the Constitution as the Founding Fathers intended. I was in the Marines for 11 years, and I worked for the State Department and DOD overseas in the Middle East. I've spent more time overseas in the last 10 years than I've spent at home. Um, I got in this race. I, I wasn't planning on getting in this race, but I got in this race because I've been very disappointed in the way Republicans have acted. They've constantly run on not raising taxes, and then they vote to raise taxes. They constantly run on not increasing spending, and they vote to increase spending. They should be standing for our individual freedoms and they vote for things like the Patriot Act and the uh, provision of the NDAA that uh, bypasses the Fourth Amendment. Um, I was a, I, I'm a UNR graduate, University of Reno, Nevada, and I was a boxer there. And uh, that's about it. When you hear the buzz, it means you got 10, 10 seconds left. So, you know, My name is Floyd Fitzgibbons. I'm a native of Nevada, born and raised here 55 years. I've been in uh, Las Vegas. I'm a family man, a Christian. In the past 32 years, I have spent probably um, tens of thousands of hours in Christian service of all uh, types and varieties. I'm a co-owner of Fitzgibbons & Associates, an independent insurance agency. I'm a mountaineer and athlete, and for the past 25 years, I've been in numerous political organizations too many to, to mention. I'm running because I believe that a candidate for any public office needs to be one who understands the principles upon which pro the proper role of government is based on. And he also needs to recognize that morality is the keystone of this whole thing. Because if we don't have people that have, have good morals and we don't promote good morals, we cannot receive God's blessings. Uh, President John Adams said that the Constitution was made only for a moral and religious society, a people which is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Can everybody hear me? Hold, hold the mic a little closer. Turn it down. 
No, no, no. <laughs> Most of those questions are for recording purposes. Right. My name is Robert X. Leeds. I'm here today because uh, it's one of the few alternatives I can take at this time. Um, my options are limited, and I want to serve my country. I last served my country two years ago. Uh, I turned 83 years old in a Black Hawk helicopter flying from Camp Hunter on the from the Mason uh, Peninsula up to Kirkuk and was on my 66th frontline patrol uh, in uh, Bakuba and got blown up in a striker vehicle. I was serving with the Arctic Wolves 1st Striker Division. Um, I have been a patriot, I think, since uh, I was 11 years old and I read a book about Don Quixote and the age of chivalry and I thought that was a great thing and I have uh, lived most of my life that way. I've fought in five wars, been in almost every branch of service and I want to continue my efforts and that's why I'm running for the uh, House of Representatives. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Hi, I'm Mike Dela Rosa. I want to thank you guys for having me over here. There was the candidates. I want to thank God for this country. It's an awesome country. I'm a single dad raising three kids, and I'm a Christian, conservative, and a constitutionalist. I believe this country is going the wrong direction. And I will not be bought out. I will not sell out to this awesome country, and I will die for it, just like other people do. I'm Mike Dela Rosa. Vote for Mike Dela Rosa. <laughs> there you go. Can we do this? Should I stand or is it another? I use the mic for the, <laughs> for the recording. All right, my name is Joseph Estri. I am uh, uh, very proud to be the candidate for U.S. Congress District 4 for the Libertarian Party of, of Nevada, so I'm a libertarian. Um, and uh, I've been a, an educator uh, since 1989. I have two small kids, which is the, my motivation for doing this. This is, I think we need to change our country and turn it around. Um, I wear many hats. Uh, I'm not a career politician. I'm a citizen activist, and I think we need more of that. I think we can, we should flush Congress and replace them with, with us. I mean, replace them with anybody, and we're going to do better. Uh, I don't think the problem is leadership in Congress. Uh, Congress is going to be, unlike the military, a confrontational place. In the military, it's very simple. I, I understand the military not being a veteran, but my brother served in Korea. He was a veteran. I got to come from a whole family of, of veterans. The military is very different. Uh, you understand orders, you take orders, you, you, you can argue about the plan beforehand, but then you get in there and you do it. It doesn't matter what you think about it. Congress doesn't operate like that. Congress is, is owned by special interests. They're sold out to those, to those interests. They tell us what they want us to hear, and then they do what, they, what they're sold out to do. So I am not doing that, and that's why I'm running as a Libertarian Party candidate. Thank you for your time. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, first question. We had talked about illegal immigration in a little bit, and uh, my question is about that. Uh, how you feel about that, how you work that. I know there's existing laws, etc. And if you are against or opposed to illegal immigration, why are you claimed as a racist? All right, well, uh, I'm all for immigration. Uh, I know my, my, my father's father, my grandfather, came from Sicily as an immigrant many years ago. All of us, you can trace our families back. Someone in our family was an immigrant. Uh, I am all for legal immigration to our country. That's what keeps us vibrant and alive. It's, we're a brain drain on the world, and that's good for us. Uh, I'm not for illegal immigration. One of the, uh, one of the uh, problems, one of the stimulus for illegal immigration is that our country doles out loads of entitlements and benefits. That should not be there, and our tax structure is part of the problem. Um, uh, I'm in favor of uh, reforming our tax structure, like having a fair tax, which would advocate a consumption tax. If we did that, that would lessen the benefits for illegal immigrants. They would be forced to pay for, they'd be forced to pay because it would be, it would be a consumption tax. So that would lessen some of the problems with illegal immigration. Um, uh, let's keep in mind that one person in Congress is not going to change Congress. Uh, the president pretty much makes all the laws and tells his party to make this happen. And uh, one person, so I'm not going to say, if I'm elected to Congress, I'll make this happen because I'm just going to be one voice advocating for change. I'll let you know what I'm advocating for. I oppose illegal immigration. I myself am an immigrant from the Philippines, so my family did it the legal way. We waited and we paid the uh, fine, not fine, but the uh, fee for it. Uh, what else? Um, my website, I want to kick out illegal immigrants as soon as possible. 
they are a burden to our federal, state, and local budgets. And yes, they have helped out, but they're more of a burden than you know, helping us out. Uh, number three, since it's imposed already, I am against it, like, full out. And I'm not a racist, even though they say I'm a, even though they label us racist, if we are against legal immigration, they just want to call names. But I'm friends with Mexicans, blacks, whites and other races so I myself personally not be legal I mean not racist but we need to protect the country. That's all there is. Um when it comes to illegal immigration, my father was born in Ireland, my wife is born in Finland, my daughter in law is born in Korea, so I have a lot of concern there. I am against illegal immigration. I think there's a way I, I would not like to see someone who was, had been here for five or ten years, held steady employment, paid his taxes and obligations, and speaks English and his family can speak English, then I think there could be some accommodation there. But anyone who's been in this country, in fact, I would require, in fact, when my uh, father married my mother, she lost her American citizenship and became a citizen of Ireland. That was the way it was in the 1800s. Um, I'm against baby drops. I think that the law should be changed so if a child is born in this country, it takes the citizenship of one of the parents. There's a choice. But if they're both foreigners, that child takes the citizenship of what the parents decide it should be. But they will not be an American citizen. Anyone who comes to this country and as an immigrant, I'd give them five years to be conversant in English except if they were over a certain age. Um, there's a lot of things that could be done, but I think we have to stop illegal immigration. On the subject of illegal immigration, the problem that we have in this country is that we have invited illegal immigration by giving benefits to people when they come here. And that's the transfer of wealth that makes what's happening in Washington dishonest. The people there in Washington hand out uh, benefits that is essentially your nice wealth and treasure so that they can curry more uh, voting favors from those people. And that's the reason why, one of the reasons why it's done, it needs to stop. And that's why we have dishonest politicians running in Congress that do these sorts of things. Another reason that's happening is because there's a push afoot, and I think most of the population now recognizes that this is true, is that there are men that want to see us go into a world government. And one of the implementations of that will be, just like they have in Europe and the European Union, a North American Union, under which we will have all one currency, and we will see that that is going to be one of the reasons why they push this illegal immigration, because when you get the population of the United States that are not citizens for the majority, for the most part, and you uh, water down all of the, the things that our country is founded upon, you then end up with a situation where people can't... Um, you know, distinguish between what's America and what's Mexico. The last thing I think we need to do is bring our troops home to protect our borders. I agree with uh, Mr. Fitzgibbons that uh, a big part of the problem is the benefits. I also believe a huge part of the problem is we have to remove regulations to make it so it's not cheaper to hire illegals than it is to hire Americans. You need to, we need to get rid of a lot of the, um, the taxes on hiring people and forcing them uh, companies to pay for uh, health care when they don't have to do that for illegals. It's got to be uh, a lot simpler, a lot easier to hire people. And But I also believe it should be easier to get work permits. If somebody wants to come here illegally and there's a need for that person, it should be a lot easier to come here and work. And that way we can make sure at the border that they're not criminals, that they don't have a, a past that we don't want. It would be easier for people to come here and work and then return to their families so they won't, there won't be this issue of uh, taking benefits from the American taxpayer and um, uh, the babies getting born here and all of that. Um, but I strongly disagree. I think if you're born in America, you are an American. I don't want the government deciding who's American and who's not and who has rights and who doesn't. If you're born here, you are an American. The Constitution says lawful jurisdiction thereof. That means if you're born here to illegal aliens, you're not an American. Pancho Villa invaded this country in 1916. He killed 18 Americans. We sent 5,000 troops down and chased them all out and went after them.
We have 78,000 troops sitting in Germany and Japan right now that have no mission. We need to guard the Germans against the French, I don't think so. We need to bring those soldiers home and place them on our borders. 20 Americans are killed every day by illegal aliens. 29% of our jails and prisons are full of illegal aliens. We need to deport every one of those after we secure our borders so they can't come back and harm American citizens. Thank you, Mr. Webster, for this uh, important question. Uh, immigration is a, a very complex emotional issue. It's, uh, it's not as cut and dry as, as many would like to make it. Um, but the, having said that, there's many things I would do. I would uh, get rid of the anchor baby uh, concept. If, if the, a baby is born to two illegal alien parents, I don't think that should be with uh, an American citizen. Uh, we have a lot of laws on the books. I, I think they should be enforced uh, by federal, state, and local uh, law enforcement. I, I think there's a lot we could do to improve the efficiencies uh, in the immigration process. Um, I, you know, in, imprisoning and then deporting all the violent uh, illegals is, is necessary. Uh, one of the things we have to do is secure the border. There's a lot we can do uh, with technology to do so. I was a career intelligence officer in the Marine Corps. I know there's some technology out there that would help out our border police a lot. Um, and I, I happened to have married an illegal alien back in the 90s. It took us 17 years for her to become a citizen. Still married to her today. We have two beautiful kids. So I know a little bit about the issue. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my question um, is uh, based on the fact that when you get into Congress, there's a myriad of issues completely um, different subject matter issues that Congress has to vote on and, and, and work on. What in your background, both you know, experience and educational background, um, gives you, you know, the best um, credentials for, for being up there and doing a great job? You want me to start down start, here? Uh, start the other side, yeah. Okay, the, the question was, what's our uh, experience in, in education? Uh, to help us succeed in Congress, is that correct? Yeah, what, what in your background makes you qualified and makes you a good candidate? Okay, I'll start with education. I have a bachelor's degree I got at the University of Nevada in Reno. Uh, I have a master's degree in public administration uh, from Troy State. Um, my experience, almost 28 years in the military. Uh, it's been to over 60 countries, seeing uh, at the tip of the spear of a lot of failed foreign policy uh, of the U.S. Uh, under both Democratic and Republican regimes. Um, having work, trying to do nation building, succeeding in some locations. I worked with the, the senior intelligence officials in uh, the country of Niger, uh, working with the, the Nigerian um, military, um, the Georgians after the Russians invaded. I was picked by name to go down and lead the intelligence assessment team, seeing what the Georgians need. Uh, I have a, for, a lot of foreign uh, policy experience, and I, I think I'm much more qualified to be at the federal level than I am at the local level because um, we're a product of our experience. Thank you. Education, I went to school here. I graduated CCSN, I went to UNLV. I went to different colleges. And all my uh, schooling doesn't mean anything compared to the real world and what we have to do in Congress. You need someone who's gonna go there and knows the laws, that reads every bill before they vote yes or no, if they don't give me time to read a bill, I'm not going to vote yes or no. The thing, that, the reason I'm bringing that up in this for this question, too many people that expect their aides to know what they're supposed to do, and they're not given enough time to read the bills. If you can't read these bills, you can't vote for them. No one, they say no one can read them all. Well, then we shouldn't put so many in for in, for, in front of us. I've led men into combat. I, I, I've done some things that in my past that are, that are so that I don't want to make sure that other kids don't ever have to do. We want to send people off to war. Let's give them what they need before we send them. If you want, uh, you want to do the right things about the Constitution, let's make sure we're, all the laws that are being put forth are constitutional, <coughs> unlike the ones that are being passed now by Congress. Sorry about that. Um, I would say what qualifies me more than anything else is a passion for freedom and for following the Constitution. I, like uh, Mr. Uh, Wagner said, I won't vote for any bill that is not constitutional. I'll make sure I understand all the, what's inside the bill before I vote for it. 
and I will demand that my colleagues do also. And also, I will uh, I'll challenge the the judges that are appointed a lot more than they've been challenged up to now for the Supreme Court. Um, I, at, I, my minor was criminal justice, and that kind of led me on the path to uh, to belief in, in the Constitution and, and in freedom, and we need to follow that. But I've also been overseas and seen foreign governments and their corruption and their abuse of, of the rights, of the human rights of their citizens, and I believe that um, that's what will drive me and that's what qualifies me. The reason I feel qualified is because, one thing, I've read the Constitution. And I would venture that many that are up there have never done so. I, I say that because I spent three summers of mine doing just exactly what you guys are doing with the Nevada Concerned Citizens. And about 500 candidates came, came before us, and I asked every single one of them the same question. And they dare not answer incorrectly with a lie because I'm afraid they would probably think that I would ask them some follow-up question, which they couldn't answer. I had five people out of 500 that told me they had read the Constitution, running for public office. That's one qualification. Two is principles. I understand the proper role of government. I understand that its responsibilities are to protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is synonymous with property rights. And three, I don't compromise my principles. I don't care what anybody says or does. I don't compromise my principles. That's the way I live by. And uh, I understand, because I've studied our government and body politic for 25 years, that we need to get rid of things like the Federal Reserve, but I'm out of time to go on. In between wars, I attended University of Illinois, Knox College, Galesburg, Illinois, and Wayne State University in Detroit. I have an MBA, uh, a Bachelor of Arts, and I have an MBA. I started work at General Motors as a clerk. After 19 years, I was uh, uh, well established as director of industrial engineering, and part of the, my one of the departments I controlled was appropriations control, which oversaw all money expenditures and accountability for those monies. Uh, after I resigned after 17 years to join with Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, and we became partners in a um, building the largest pet motel in America. Uh, a very unusual. Um, enterprise. I remained its president for 27 years and I resigned in 1999 because of the, um, uh, the death penalty would have been a problem. And uh, I, uh, I agree up. with that. Good question. Good question. My uh, studies was in administration justice. Uh, my career right now, I'm a correctional officer, so I know what bribes are about. And so far, I've said no to every single one of them. So. Conviction is me. Character is another quality of me. All right? I'm running my own show. Nobody's giving me any money. But I do prefer your endorsements because that gives me a little credibility. Lots of seeds in this comment here. So anyways, um, so I will read the bill like I read, a, I read the Constitution, and it's a great body of work. And it does say, like Mr. Fitzgibbons said, the gist is small government, more power to the people. I will only vote for those concepts all the way. Mike DeLaRosa, for Congress. All right, Joe Silvestri, a libertarian candidate for uh, District 4, and that's probably my best qualification. I'm not or Republican, and I think they're, they're the parties that have brought us into this mess. Uh, if you're elected to Congress, you have to serve the machine, and you're going to serve your political machine. I'm not. I'm an independent. I can vote the way I want. I'm not sold out to the special interests, and they bought out everybody. If I was willing to go that route, I'd join the Democrats or Republicans, I'd sing their tune, and I'd get elected, but that's not the way I want to live my life. I've lived my life as an educator. I was a political science history major uh, in college. I, I grew up in New York State. My first 30 years were there. I, uh, I got my education degree. I got my master's from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And, um, you know, I understand government. I understand how it works. Uh, I read Why Government Doesn't Work by Harry Brown, and the light went on. I understand that government is a dysfunctional organization. So I think we need to shrink it. I believe in personal freedom. I believe in fiscal responsibility and social tolerance. So. 
I'll do what I say I'm going to do. I'm not sold out to anybody. That's my best qualification. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here and making yourselves available for these questions. Uh, my first question is going to be to Mr. Fitzgibbons. Mr. Fitzgibbons, can you define the perimeter of your district? And the reason I'm asking this question, and one of my panelists asked me why I asked this question, is I personally feel that every district has its own unique problems. Could you define your district for some perimeter? Yeah, it's, it's the northern, essentially, half of Las Vegas. One district is the center part of it. We've got essentially the northern part of Las Vegas and several counties that go up towards the north of the state. And the reason why I'm running in District 4 is because, one, I live there just like Ken Wagner mentioned, and two, I'm an outdoorsman. And part of the reason why I like this district, and, and I'm glad that I live there and I'm running in that district, is because the federal government controls 85% of the lands here in the state of Nevada, and I'm almost reluctant to call this the state of Nevada. Maybe we ought to call it the state of the federal government where we get to live as supposed Nevadans. Which was very nice because you led into my real, my real question. What's the biggest problem in your district and what are you going to do to solve it? You want me to go on with that? Yes, sir, I do. Well, I think the first thing that needs to be done for Nevada is that we get the federal government out of our lands. The BLM controls so much of everything that's done, every activity that wants to be happening. I've got guys that I ensure that uh, run off-road race teams. The last time they ran the Mint 400, for example, they paid the BLM $80,000 for one day of racing out there where they had maybe a dozen officers out there running around in pickup trucks. Uh, that's the kind of ridiculousness that we, we are losing control of, and it's all because, as well, Agenda 21, which is from the United Nations, which is going to take our property rights from us. Which way you want to go? Mr. Hall. Bill. Bill, my fault. Yes, I agree. Um, we need to get the return to the Tenth Amendment, return the power to the states, um, oppose Agenda 21. It's a, it violates U.S. sovereignty and local sovereignty. Um, as as uh, as far as like what particularly to the district, it's return power locally. Local government is best government. Smallest government is best government. So return the power locally. Get the federal government out of things it shouldn't be involved in and fight Agenda 21 at every. Uh, every instance. Mr. Wagner. Well, I wish it was just that simple to say, oh, we just need to do that. There's so many, in our, in our areas, we're having problems with the BLM, with them, them taking our water rights away from us. Uh, in the north, or that would be the south, if coming back, if you're going to from Lyon or Esmeralda or any of the other counties. The problem is uh, jobs, how simple it would be to repair our economy. That, the, there's so many people in my, in my neighborhood that have lost their homes already. It didn't need to go the way that it did. There's so many people, uh, the crime out where I'm at, it's, it's, you know, they're robbing houses now that are empty. There's, there's just so many things that in one minute, I, I mean, my brain is just going, how can I even come close to telling you all the things that need to be done? That one, and that I do believe one person could do because I really, because you're in an agricultural area. Do you believe that water is the number one uh, issue out there? Absolutely, out there. It's the water. They've taken our water rights, and it's. I had, I'm running out of time. I had introduced something a long time ago to bring water from the Mississippi and the Missouri and bring it west. It could have built 29 new dams. A water could, pipeline? Uh, no, actually. Oh. I'll <laughs> explain to you later. <laughs> I apologize for not being able to answer fast. No, that was good enough, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, your first question: There's uh, seven counties in the in the district: Esmeralda, White Pine, Nye, Lincoln, and uh, parts of uh, uh, Lyon and Clark and, and Mineral County. There, um, the, the three biggest problems in the district are, are uh, unemployment, unemployment, unemployment. Um, so jobs is is what I'm focusing on. Uh, a couple of things. I want Nevada to be the renewable energy capital of the world. As, as JFK challenged the nation to put a man on the moon and return safely in 10 years, I'm challenging Nevada to be off of fossil fuels within 10 years, the nation in 20. And we have a lot of renewable energy sources here. Nevada can do this. We have the land to do it. You know, the, the federal government owns 90% of the country, but the, the state, we can do that. The other thing, 
because we import the majority of our food. Nevada is not an agricultural powerhouse uh, creating these hydroponic vertical farms I'd like to do in some of the larger um, population places. If a crisis happens and or just the price of fuel keeps going up, our food is going to be unaffordable. So if we build these in the local areas, it's, it's like a self-licking ice cream cone. It's, it's uh, grown there, people work there, and they eat it. It's better than organic, and um, that's my, uh, what yeah. I would switch for. Are you swinging around the bend? Yeah, why don't you? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Joe. Hi, uh, Joseph Vestry. Uh, um, to answer your question directly, well, what would I do for my district? I'm in District 4. Currently, I live in District 4. That's why I'm running there. I think our biggest problem is what our government spends and what it takes in. I mean, we're passing a deficit to our children. We're living on a credit card that I won't do, I, I won't do this to my children, yet we're doing it to all of our grandchildren. Congress gets into all this and they consistently spend way more than we take in. So how do I help my district? We stop that. We stop federal, our federal bureaucrats and our federal Congress from spending way more than it takes in passing this debt, this deficit to our grandchildren. That's the first thing I would do. Now let's look at what, what Congress actually does. They give us uh, no child left behind, right? Well, that worked great. As a teacher, you talk to any teachers how well that's worked. Now we're back. Now we have Obama's version. Currently, we have Obamacare as the new, the new hidden. Part. What do we get from the federal government that's working? I believe, as has been pointed out, great. The Tenth Amendment reserves powers to the states that are not enumerated to the federal government. So let's get back to that and let Nevada run Nevada. Let Nevada have control over our own land. So thank you. My territory in District Four is the same as his answer, of course. <laughs> And I do live in this in Peru, but we got plenty of water, thank God. So the problems over here in North Las Vegas is one of the major ones for is jobs. The only way we can stimulate job growth is cutting regulations and shrinking the government and the taxes. That's what, that's what's putting a burden on future entrepreneurs. So why would I work my butt off and attack, and the federal government will take 50, 60% to give it to someone else who just wants to just hang out and do nothing. Drink alcohol, maybe, or do drugs. I don't oppose that, but you know, instead of working. Okay? But my, but my key point is shrink the damn government. That's my man. 90% is in my website. 90% tax, 10% federally, and the sales tax. That will stim stimulate the economy so fast. We're going to have to bring in more illegal aliens over here, but they can't. We're going to protect them. But the key is everybody will have a job, everybody will follow their dream and be as rich as they want to work. In. That's my goal. Um, I, I think if you have listened to all the problems that we, that different areas that we've covered today, they, it, it, there's one central theme that is get government out of business. And, um, turn it over to the states and get the states their, the rights that are guaranteed them by the Constitution. And I've read the Constitution. Um, I think that um, you're going to have to uh, have a new mentality in Congress and one that, um, for one thing, I am staunchly opposed to a balanced budget. I think we should have a budget that spends less than what we take in and we should start paying down our national debt. Uh, when they speak about a balanced budget, it's great for those people who want to spend everything that we take in and balance it that way. Um, I don't think that's the way to approach this problem that we have plenty now. But basically, uh, we have one problem, and that is the government has usurped uh, all the rights of the states. And as far as the Constitution goes, there's no agreement as to what the Constitution says Time's anymore. Up. Move on, please. All right, thank you. Now, even though we started um, we started late, it's 3.45 now, but uh, I, I think we need to do at least one more question. So unless I get outvoted by the you panel here. Question. Well, um, I think we got to do one more question here since we started late. Uh, who's, got, who's got a real pressing question here? Actually, we'll... I have a statement I'd like to make, not a question. All right, go ahead. Um, right. Well, I don't, really don't need a microphone. Uh, consistently, we're hearing our elected officials completely disregard the will of we the people and uh, our laws and our constitution. And each one of you up here has something better to bring to our congressional table than what we currently have. But only one of you is going to win, so I'm looking at at least seven losers. <laughs> so I would like each of you to think about this. Uh, two things. Um, one, what could you do to reach out to your constituents if you do win to get more of 
in tune with what the will of the people are or is. And um, two, uh, what you're going to do to continue your ideal fight for your fight for American freedom when you do lose, because you know, like I said, you know, seven of you are going to lose, um, and and each of you has something really good to bring. So you don't have to win a seat in Congress to keep fighting for America. So I just would like you to all to think about that during your campaign. Thank you. Do you want them to comment on closing that? Closing no. statement now? No. Right. Well, no, we're not going to do closing statements. No. But uh, to tell you what, I have a question. As, as a lawyer, I'm always carrying the Constitution with me. I need to reference it for several reasons. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if someone wants to show, if they actually have it and carry it with them, um, we, we'd probably be, some of us might be interested <laughs> in seeing that you really are constitutional. I have uh, uh, limited you, government control. Walk out of the car and bring everybody in this room a constitution. They're all in the back of the truck. Seriously, don't have to All right. Obviously, they, we need okay, to have them. right here on my phone. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for coming. And